Hello, welcome to episode 14 of the Foxhole Feed. Happy Wednesday to everybody. Um, lots of news to go over, as you guys see here behind you, that I'm playing, um, you know, Metal Gear Solid Online right now. Um, I tried to get it to, to load into an actual game and I kept getting kicked out. I guess they're having technical issues still at the game. Uh, so I'm just fooling around a little bit here. Um, wish I could get some footage to show everyone, but... Um, no, we don't. So I'm GS5 players. Um, be on the lookout for it. It exists now. It's out and about. Uh, now for some news. Lots of interesting news. Lots of industry news. Lots of reveals. Lots of news was going on last couple of days. Some shocking news too. Um, especially for middle of the week type news. Um, now the Star Wars Battlefront news is um, they've released the requirements for the PC version of the actual game for all my PC fans out there. Um, they changed some of the specs up from what was from the beta prior for what was from the closed beta. The specs have changed slightly. Um, the OS is now required to be a 64 bit Windows 7 or later. Um, the processor has to be an Intel i3 or equivalent. Um, the memory has to be 8 gigs or more. The hard drive has to be 40 gigs of space, clearly, or more. Um, the graphics card for NVIDIA users, it's going to be the GTX 660 2 gig model. For the ATI users, it has to be a Radeon 78050 or 7850 2 gig model. And it ever, both of them have to be DirectX um, above DirectX um, 11, clearly. It's either that or equivalent um, for those cards. Um, I mean, this is to be expected. This game is a next generation only title. So unlike the other Battlefield titles that could scale back to PlayStation 3 and the 360, this title, you know, doesn't, you know, do that and it can't. So they're seeking maximum fidelity. So those, those specs are very much reflecting that. Um, in other industry news, Ubisoft buys um, the crew developer. So Ubisoft made um, open world game, open world racing game, The Crew. The developer Ivory Tower was purchased by Ubisoft. So now they officially own this team now. Um, I wonder what this spells for them. I mean, clearly it shows that they're they're planning more stuff for The Crew. The Crew was clearly successful enough for them to, um, you know, help themselves to it. Like they didn't really say any sales figures. They only state that they were able to rack up 3 million players since its release. But I don't, I don't know what 3 million players, you know, translates into. I mean, do they mean sales or do they just mean that's how many people were playing it? Um, I know recently EA showed her some Titanfall numbers where they stated that, you know, more than 10 million people played the game. And I'm just like, I mean, yeah, 10 million people played the game, but this is a hard number in terms of is it accurate? We don't really know what this means. Like, yeah, 10 million people played it. How many people bought it? Is there a reason why anyone's saying that? You know, I'm, I'm sure that it's a, a substantial amount would have had to had clearly bought it to have been linked to that number. But, you know, why state a player base and not state, you know, the exact, you know, number of sales? So who knows how, why they're stating that stat. Now, they're making an expansion to the crew called Wild Run, which is supposed to come out in November. Um, the closed betas are supposed to be out later this month on PC. Um... I don't know how big that title is. I mean, again, they stated that number, but I don't know how big, small that number is to them. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Now, in other Ubisoft news, um, <laughs> some some quite surprises came out um, earlier. Um, yesterday, or day prior, I would say, the day before yesterday, which would have been, what, Monday? Um, Reddit and NeoGAF um, kind of outed and spotted some stuff regarding Far Cry, a new Far Cry game called Far Cry Primal. Uh, they had screenshots, they had box art, they had a whole bunch of shit. So finally, um, you know, the next day following Ubisoft announces uh, what, you know, many of us already know, that they're um, releasing a Far Cry game. Yay! So Far Cry Primal. Um, their new game, it's going to be a Stone Age game, it's going to be clearly primal like I'm saying, in, um, you know, the BC, 10,000 BC era, 
Um, it's basically going to be an open world game, clearly like the previous Far Cry's. Uh, and get this, it's coming out February 23rd, 2016. Yes, so this is coming out same day as Deus Ex, uh, Human, um, I think it's called Human Revolution, or D Mankind Divided, excuse me, I'm thinking of the last one. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is kind of shocking and surprising and sort of like way, 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 way out of left field to sort of just out of nowhere just be like, yeah, by the way, here's a game coming out. Um, I like what I saw, you know, the developer goes on and they, you know, they had a developer diary after uh, the game footage, um, which was kind of nice. So um, you could check it out on their site. Their site's going to show a little bit of game footage um, or it's going to show some behind the scenes footage. I'm going to link the YouTube video all the way on the bottom for you guys. So you guys can check it out um, or you guys could look just look right here in your corner because I'm going to have the video playing there anyway. You could just have the link if you want to see it in full screen to get the full effect. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy about this now. Certain people were citing that this sort of goes against, you know, what Far Cry is and, you know, maybe this should have been a new IP and, you know, is this really Far Cry? And, you know, I, I've, I was reading a lot of those comments and I, I actually disagree for um, lots and lots of reasons I disagree with that notion. The concept of, of what a genre is, is more so defined as what you're doing in the game in terms of an idea of what you're doing in the game versus the actual physical things that are in the game. Now, my film teacher, um, she doesn't define genre as specific item things. Like, um, let's say Far Cry has cars in it, has guns in it. She doesn't define it by those specific things. Though you are in a car, you're using it to traverse. Though you have guns, it's just merely a weapon. It's not just about the specific gun or just about the specific car. Take, for example, in, in Far Cry uh, 4, you could ride an elephant on there. You could ride specific animals on there. I mean, that makes it less Far Cry that it's not a Jeep. I mean, you got weapons, but could you not trade those weapons in for a bow, for a hammer, for other, you know, things that technically, you know, could get the job done, that, that still lends to the concept of, of what it is, more so than these specific things that are in the actual game. Now, um, what you would define as one would be, like I stated before, what you do in it. You, you, you traverse a large open world. The, the, like they stated, is Far Cry has always been about the nature versus man type of concept. Even with the very first Far Cry, you sort of had some of that in there with instincts. But um, the rest of the series lends deeply to the whole, you're, you're getting attacked by junk. And it's always about uh, something versus nature versus you versus either animals versus you. Always something regarding that. You had to survive the elements. In, in Far Cry 2, you had to survive malaria. And then and in Far Cry 3 and 4, it was animals attacking you and then you saving animals. And it was always about this whole symbiotic thing of, you know, being in this open world and nature and all this other so this is right up the far cry alley so um before anybody wants to question what it is no it's not dlc it's not a side game they make it very obvious that it is a main far cry game it's treated like a main far cry game i don't believe you're not seeing a number because it's a side game i predicted a couple years ago that ubisoft would stop adopting the numbers behind their games because activision slowly began doing that with some of their titles they slowly stopped adding numbers to those titles as so you don't just i guess um feel how old some of the titles are which i think is correct so they stopped doing that with assassin's creed um they stopped doing that with a couple titles and um you know ubisoft is you know you're starting to do it with this series i believe and i believe the next far cry don't be surprised if it's not titled with a five or a six it's just going to be subtitled the way you see assassin's creed is so um yeah i would say this is a brand new assassin's uh, not assassin's creed excuse me i would say this is a brand new um far cry title is to be treated like a main title um don't treat it any less not a side game very much main game um so there's survival aspects on it um you got uh, in the trailer clearly you saw all these people spearing like this big ass like like mammoth thing this mastodon thing it was pretty badass i'm really excited for it even though it's similar to like some other games like that arc um, um evolution revival game that's on steam and very similar to to another game called the wild which we don't know too much about so it may not be that similar to it um 
new ideas like this and new concepts like this are 100% welcome. I feel gaming still in its sort of infancy, so I don't think we could be counting any game out and just saying that we don't need it or don't want it or there's too much of it. Something's wrong if three titles in it is too much in it. So I'm very excited about this um, new game coming out. Um, very much out of left field. I'm just sort of surprised that it was announced the way it was announced. Now into some development news here, uh, Yu Suzuki talks about, um, you know, needs more money for Shenmue 3 people. Man's out here fucking struggling and shit. Man's riding, right? He needs his fucking money. But Yu, <laughs> Yu Suzuki, um, don't know him. Famous Shenmue director. Um, directed so many amazing Sega titles. Virtual Fighter, Hang On, um, Legendary producer, legendary director, legendary programmer. Um, is asking for more money for Shenmue 3. Now, if, uh, if you guys didn't follow the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter, um, success, most successful video game Kickstarter to date ended at $6 million, um, in funding. Um, he, last month, he opened up a Kickstarter, not Kickstarter, a PayPal page um, following his Kickstarter being successful so he could get more development money to basically complete the rest of the game. He states that Kickstarter is not his only source of money. There's also funding from Sony, from Shibuya Productions, which is his um, company that he's running to run the game with. Um, and he told him this during an interview at Tokyo Game Show. Now, um, before I get too much into this, um, lots of things need to be said. There's lots of confusion regarding how this game is being made, how this game was basically conceived in terms of him deciding to, to create it, um, who's funding it. There's lots of things that sort of um, need to be explained before I move on on here, because there's lots of misinformation regarding this. Um, First off, Yu Suzuki does not own the IP to Shenmue. It's being licensed out to him by Sega. Sega owns the IP to Shenmue. Sega owns the publishing rights to Shenmue. All of this is going to be licensed out to you. Now, Sony is not essentially paying for this game because it's not their IP. Sony does not own the actual game. They don't own the publishing rights. There's nothing that they own of this game. The only thing to my understanding that they're paying for is marketing. So when he says that they're funding, yes, marketing is a part of funding. It is not part of development, but it's a part of funding. What they're saying is that they will market the game, um, and that's about it. I, to my understanding, I heard they would also um, pay for some distribution, and to my understanding, it also would, that would also mean paying for the port of the PlayStation 4 version of the actual game to bring it to that system. Now, lots of um, talk and I think slander was being put behind this company based on the news of uh, this Kickstarter. And a lot of it is misinformation. A lot of it doesn't really make sense. And a lot of it is throwing out there questions of how this came about. You wanted to create this game. And he states that when Kickstarter became successful and everybody began looking towards Kickstarter, this is when he came about to say he would revive Shenmue. Now, Sega clearly doesn't want no part of this because Shenmue is not a successful IP to Sega. This game went on, the first two titles went on to do hor horrible numbers. We're talking really, really bad numbers. For a game that cost them, both games combined, a little bit over 70 plus million dollars to create both of these titles. These titles didn't go on to pay for their continuous, you know, development. Let's let's look at Konami, for example. Uh, seven years to make Metal Gear Solid 5 cost them 80 million dollars, you know, but they're at least going to be making, you know, 7 million plus units being sold off of this title, so they're making their money back. DLC, microtransactions, uh, all that shit. They're making their money back off of that game. But for them, seven years is too much. Eight, you know, uh, you know, five platforms being created on there, and and seven years development and seventy million dollars. Excuse me, eighty million dollars used for MGS5. I mean, that's a lot of money for uh, sales that don't even kind of justify the amount of money that was technically spent on the game. It's covered, sure. But Assassin's Creed is doing, you know, 
three years development or so in an Assassin's Creed title by one of their teams, and they're crushing those numbers easily. And I can assure you the three years they're spending making Assassin's Creed, it's not fucking costing them Metal Gear Solid 5 or Shenmue money. Now look at Sega. They're a smaller publisher. They got titles like, uh, you know, Yakuza being released and Sonic being released and all these other games that they release. They have no reason at all to go out and uh, spend more millions on an IP that's not doing anything for them. The Yakuza series sells. The Yakuza series makes money for Sega. So with that series doing well and them being successful in those endeavors, they don't really have much reason to say, let's go back and spend more money on an IP that didn't work for this the first time. Now, granted, they could take the Yakuza team and say, hey, let's go and redo Shenmue, but they have to lower their expectations. I believe you could still make a game like Shenmue with far less money because you're not really going to be implementing the same things. That was, uh, you know, development from 15 years ago. So that development took to make that 15 years ago, truthfully, I don't think is that expensive to make today because to today's standards it's not really you know as expensive as they might believe i just believe sega feels they won't make a return based on the sales of the game yakuza has you know gangsters in it it's much more mainstream in japan and they're pulling out a million plus units every single iteration of this series so I, I don't blame Sega for why they wouldn't go out to do this. And on the and, you know, on the next note, I wouldn't blame Sony because it's not really Sony's responsibility. It's they have no owed to go and fund a game that they don't own the IP to. Now you stated he wanted to get this game done this way through Kickstarter. You stated that it was his project, and he stated he did not want funding from those companies. He probably doesn't want them because of what's attached to it. And what's attached to it might be changing the IP. What that means to them is they're not going to release a or spend funding on a title if they don't feel they're going to make their money back if they feel it's ultra niche. You probably doesn't want them changing the title for sales. And I, you know, I agree with them in that respect. I can't disagree with a creator wanting their game to be made a specific way. That's something I don't really disagree with. Um... Now, in terms of who should be funding, who shouldn't be funding, look, this was stated on the very day of the Kickstarter that, um, or this very day that it was announced at E3, that this was U's project, that this was not Sony's project, that this was U's, that they had nothing to do with it other than marketing. And the several reasons being is clearly, again, U doesn't want them funding the project. U doesn't own the IP to the project. He's merely licensing it out. Sega is not selling the IP. So the only reason I see Sony not funding it is because of why. Why would they fund it? Shenmue is not going to fucking sell more PlayStation 4s. That is a fucking joke. I love the game. I love both Shenmue games. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I, but I could assure you, it's not going to sit there and push serious numbers. That's a damn lie. So I don't believe they're going to go out of their way and say, come on, y'all, let's go push 20 million units plus on this. So we're going to put $20 million. No, they're not going to do that because it's not going to push the units and they're not going to make their money back, period. So uh, I believe Sony might be holding out and I believe they're holding out because Sega is not giving a number that they want. And I think they're seeking to buy the IP from Sega because if they're going to turn this into a series that makes them money, I actually think Sony probably wants to get something from it like owning the IP. Consider a developer like Naughty Dog, not Naughty Dog, excuse me, Insomniac. Not even Insomniac I got a second look at Sony when they wanted them to pay for Sunset Overdrive, yet they weren't going to sell the IP. Consider that this is a company that's been working with Sony for a very long time, longer than Sega's ever had relations with Sony. And they're not going to do that. They're basically saying, no, we're not going to do that. That if we're going to fund your project, we own it. And if we're not going to own it, go somewhere else. That's the way they're seeing it as that they're only focusing on in-house development in terms of that type of funding. And they're not going to do it. So I, I agree with that stance. So um, I'm going to link the PayPal to the bottom if you guys still want to go ahead and back it. It's called the Slacker Backer Campaign. Um, donations are going to be up through the ending of the year. Um, definitely back it if you have not backed Shenmue 3 already. 
don't let misinformation confuse the crap out of you this was announced day one that this was what it was and you can't really blame some of these companies for for why they might be standoffish on that because they're not going to go bankrupt to do this because that move with Shenmu, you're talking about 1999 money in terms of 70 million that's equivalent to almost a hundred million dollars type money today on a series that didn't sell 1 million that is the equivalent to that or it sold barely sold 1 million so that's the equivalent to that we, we just we can't we can't do that that's something that's just like a no no i wouldn't do it as a company i wouldn't agree with it i love shenmu to you know to death and it's one of my favorite ips but i don't disagree with the companies not kind of going gaga and going bankrupt over them um, so you guys check out the campaign. I'll link it to the bottom um, I'll link some other stuff to the bottom for you guys too so you guys could check out um, and support my boy you In other development news um, CD project red wants to sort of break their silence on um, Cyberpunk 2077 if you don't know what cyber um, Punk 2077 is, you know, look in the goddamn corner of your motherfucking goddamn screen. Oh, it's going to be right there. Um, I got a link to it. It's going to be their new RPG, which was announced like a couple years ago. Um, open world, RPG, um, futuristic, and augmentation, and all that fanciness. Now, um, they state um, some really interesting news. Some news that I was actually really happy to hear and surprised to hear just out of the blue, too. So um, they're stating that um, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is far, far bigger than The Witcher 3. End quotation. I'm doing air quotes to you guys right now. It's bigger than Far Cry 3. And I was like, oh, excuse me, bigger than The Witcher 3. Excuse me. And I was like, oh my god. That's so cute. So basically, it's much bigger. It's much open. He states that Witcher 3's scope helped the studio refine their open world formula. Um, he's stating that, you know, they want to continue that Witcher 3 sort of scope to help them in their next title. Um, taught them, it says that Witcher 3's complexity in terms of how big it was taught them a lot. I'm not really that shocked or surprised. I, I, I like the team, but playing the first two Witcher games, I knew that Witcher 3 was going to have some trouble in the open world department because the first two games are not really open world compared to something like an Elder Scrolls or a Fallout. Now I knew they might run into trouble with this um, before the game released seeing how the team has never done it before. Because the team has never done open world to the extent of those titles I knew that trouble might be you know coming around the way. So one of the only gripes that I have, I have some gripes, one of the only gripes I have with Witcher 3 is you can't see the waypoint um when you're basically traveling you have to look in the corner of the screen at the little map um you know versus you know having a waypoint that's showing you where it is sort of like if you guys see me play metal gear solid um um five sometimes or any type of game that's like that elder scrolls fallout metal gear whatever you could sort of see the waypoint and you could also you know get to look at the setting get to look at everything around you versus on the witcher where you're almost like constantly looking at the corner of the screen um you know those small things like that that sort of like you know they don't have the type of experience like these other teams that have been doing this for a long long time in terms of fully open world for a long time in terms of a concept like that they have better experience doing titles like that so cyberpunk is going to to basically get the help um that you know witcher couldn't get because of that experience so now cyberpunk is going to you know be able to be a much better game than it would have been you know how did it come out first or last I, I was sort of happy the witcher was coming out before cyberpunk just based on you know they get to learn some of those lessons um but that's still pretty awesome that it's going to be bigger um uh, i'd like to know in terms of how in terms of depth what are they going to do with it i mean i want interiors i want lots of interiors i mean we've been given open world of uh, we've been given open world and open cities that are just basically open cities and steel boxes where there's you can't walk inside of anything we've been given that a lot and um i personally don't really want anything like that i sort of like how they do mgs5 where if you got a building you could go inside of most of them versus like you'll just give you an empty dead wasteland um so hopefully you know they fill it with a whole lot of stuff because this rpg is shaping up to be pretty badass in other RPG development news, 
um, Computer Entertainment Developers Conference in Japan, which is sort of similar. It's called CEDC or CEDEC, um, which is similar to GDC over here and like uh, the States. Well, GDC sometimes is a place over here anyway. Uh, well, I would say it's similar to GDC elsewhere in the world. Um, show up some Final Fantasy 15. Um, animations. Square is showing like their technology, shows some ray tracing, and showing some lip sync animation, which I didn't even know that the lip sync stuff was like sort of automated that way. I didn't know, oh, excuse me, animated that way. I didn't know it was that complex. So the video is really interesting if you guys feel like taking up taking a look at it um, on the bottom over here. I'll also link you to the actual footage itself. Um, it shows a, a lot of stuff that I've already kind of felt with like the demo itself. Like if you step on a rock, you'll notice like um, his the animations basically change based on the the position of where your body is. There's a couple games that do that. Like MGS5 does that to like an extent, and there's a couple other games that sort of do that. But um, Final Fantasy 15 sort of does it to a greater extent. Um, so real time lip syncing is in the game, which I which I did not know. Um, so they go ahead and show all these different complex animations that are happening in the game in terms of movement, in terms of uh, manipulation between parts like you hitting something and it's animation changing due to you hitting it. Um, very interesting stuff to anybody who's interested in game development. Um, very interesting. Links at the bottom and the full presentation is also linked, but I'm pretty positive all of it's in Japanese. But linked if you give a fuck. Sony plans to license out Horizon Zero Dawn clothing, apparel, toys, and much more. So apparently, um, they presented up the licensing marketplace. To, I guess their dude that does their branding and licensing and all that fanciness um, has basically announced that they're planning to, you know, license out their actual, you know, games to places. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn specifically. Uh, states that the epic feel of the game, breathtaking visuals, strong character development, imaginative and combat sequences, blah, 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 blah. So it sounds like he's just pretty much saying that, you know, if they want to license out these merchandise, um, author consumers a way to extend their extraordinary experience to their everyday lives. Now, I actually really agree with this. Um, I own some gaming stuff myself, and I lie to I actually own a lot of fucking gaming stuff, and now that I think about it, uh, man, it's actually quite a lot. And I own a um, Foxhound, like, t-shirt, like, of the old Foxhound logo from Metal Gear Solid 1, and I own, like, a sweater with, like, Resident Evil Umbrella Company insignia on it from Capcom, and, um... I own a lot of stuff, but um, there's lots of um, small things that I purchase, like the mouse pad I even am looking at right now. I'm realizing, like, I look all over my desk and it's like everywhere. <laughs> a mouse pad I have is a Left 4 Dead mouse pad. I have a Team Fortress 2 mouse pad. So Valve does a good job with that. I have like an Aperture sports bottle and I have like another Aperture sports bottle. It's sort of like a clear one. Um, so I, I, I actually like companies that do this. I think um, smart idea. I know Bavesta does that a lot. They're a really smart independent company. Um, they don't just rest your laurels on, you know, selling you on a game. Uh, they need money. So they're not going to rest their laurels on selling just a game to your ass. They need this shit. So they go out and they got t-shirts and sweaters and you could buy like the... The pit boy like hoodie and you could buy like the the all the fallout gear and you could even buy like the, the some sayings from skyrim and other bavesta titles and doom and all that so they they do a great job at merchandising and marketing themselves out and not sort of leaving themselves in an area of just selling games um other companies i feel miss out greatly on that like i see and i look at it and i'm just like man you guys would make so much fucking money if you guys just did this 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 and a lot of times they don't i think it's sometimes i think it's pretty stupid i think they could make more money than they could be making gaming is not just about just games it's a cultural thing it's everything um the culture itself has all these things of fandom just like a movie does just like music does and i think that some of these game companies need to begin thinking about that in that regard um, so apparently, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for Horizon Zero Dawn, like, t-shirts and toys and apparel and all other fucking shit. Happy about that. Very interesting for my nerd fandom to, to now have another company to buy crap from. Um, yeah, this has been episode 14 of the Foxhole Feed. You guys look out for episode 15 
on Friday. Um, be on the lookout for um, footage of the Star Wars Battlefront beta that I'm going to be playing. Be on the lookout for me posting some Metal Gear Solid um, online footage, you know, if I could get it up and running, as opposed to you guys watching me, like, doing these fucking slides and shit and, like, doing all this crap. Um, yeah, so there's been an episode. It's been game. Like always, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for all the support. And, yeah, this game.